snow. This is the Petro Pass in Pickering, Ontario. There it is. And there is the mighty building. That's it, that's the whole thing. Today's gonna be a good day. Even though it's busy here, you got this guy coming in the exit. With this guy trying to go out the exit. You got the fuel islands over there just filled right up. Where's this guy going? Is he gonna cut the line going to that pump right there? I guess so, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna go and fuel up there. <laughs> Cut in front of all those guys over there. <laughs> okay, bud. Oh, no, no, yep, yeah, he's doing it. He knows the trick of the petrol passes. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, all of you, okay? You're all gonna be part of this little secret club of the petrol pass. At these petrol pass pumps, you know, there's always fuel lanes, right? Like one, two, three, four with a, a main pump and then a satellite pump on the other side, right? So that you can fuel them size. You know, on the end of the fuel islands where this guy went, right there? On the end of the islands, you can fuel there too. At most of these petrol passes, but it's only got the one pump and then it has a long extended hose with a, uh, a spring-loaded uh, cable attached to it and you can actually pull it around between your truck and trailer to the other side and fuel your other tanks. So you can fuel both tanks on the side here like this. The secret and the, the thing about this is most people don't know that. So when they're all lined up waiting to get into a pump with one with a satellite, you can do what this guy did, come all the way in, just go to the side here. And if you're okay with swinging that uh, that hose around through your, behind your cab, like we used to all the time at all the card logs anyway, and then you can grab your fuel and go. Now you're part of the elite Petro Pass secret knowledge club. I made it up myself. I'm the leader. You don't have to wait in line all the time because these other guys, they don't know. Really, you shouldn't cut in front of the line, but It's like a secret cheat code. Fuel on the side. So, yes. We're ready to go. It's snowing. <laughs> Southern Ontario. Southern Ontarians freak out when there's just a little bit of snow falling. So traffic is going to be absolutely terrible. I know it already. They don't get as much snow down here. They have better weather. This is the uh, more populated part of the country for a reason. It's, they got better weather. Uh, so when uh, the first snowflake falls, they panic. Not all of them, not all of them, but a lot more of them panic than panic in Manitoba. Though Manitobans aren't exactly blameless and guiltless on, on that front either. It seems wherever you go, it doesn't matter if you're from Manitoba, Alberta, or even Eastern Canada, wherever you're from, whenever the first snowfall hits the ground, it seems there's a, a specific group of people that shall not be named because we don't know what their names are we don't even know who they are but they exist as soon as the first snowflake falls boom ditch right in the ditch right there do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars straight to the ditch first snowflake every year <laughs> let's not be that person today please let's let's not be that person today we got to go 100 kilometers or 60 miles uh, east down the 401 now to a town called Colburn. I'm going to drop off these reels there. They said as long as I'm there before 3 o'clock, I'm good. Hopefully the snow doesn't slow them down. 
And then we go back to London, Ontario, on the other side of Toronto, on the east side of Toronto. We're gonna sit there and wait for the day after tomorrow to load up my load. It's, uh, it's a wide load. It's gonna be under 12 feet, uh, 11 foot eight. I've got my permit with me here already. I've got my flags, my signs, uh, my beacons I've tested, make sure they're good to go. So when we pick this load up, we can flag it and tag it, chain it down and drag it on back to Manitoba. I believe the load is going to Brandon, Manitoba, but they only want it delivered a week later. And I'm gonna be there in like three days. I can only pull this wide load during daylight hours. So it might take me a little longer to get through Northern Ontario. It's a narrow two lane road. I can't drive at night. Uh, that says it right on my permit. So we're gonna get loaded as early as possible and we'll drive to around sunset and we'll find a good parking spot somewhere and we just have to shut, shut it down. And then I can get rolling again one half hour before sunrise. And the way I figure out when sunrise and sunset is gonna be, I just Google it. Say, hey Google, when's the sun setting today in such and such a place? Look, oh, the sun is setting at 6.30 p.m. Well, that means that I have to be off the road by seven, by a half hour after sunset. And I don't wanna push it that far, so we'll see. Let's go get our freight. Let's worry about that tomorrow. Or the day after tomorrow. Let's go. All right. Lights are on. Wipers work. Gonna need them today. We're gonna make sure our trailer is gonna come with us. All right, all right, all right. And whoop. Oh, lovely. Trailer is attached. Brakes work. I'm gonna release the brakes. Gonna make sure that they release for me. Oh, and look at that, we're rolling forward. Oh, oh, it's a good day. It's a good day. All right, here we go, let's get, get out there. Let's drive out into the snow here in a little bit. Thank you for the place to park Petro Pass, I appreciate it. It's gonna be a bit of a sharp corner here, oh my. Oh my. Turn left then, turn left in 160 meters. Okay. Oh yeah, come on all blue, another day, let's go. I'll treat you good, you treat me good, that's the deal, right? Really wanna get rid of these reels, I'm tired of pulling them around dragging me down. Guess it's a good thing I didn't park here. It's all full of cars. In 100 meters, turn left on Bailey Street, RR 22. Most of these cars work at these businesses around here. I know this is a very Canadian thing in the big Canadian cities, Toronto, Vancouver and that. Uh, businesses, they don't have enough parking for their employees, so their employees are forced to park on the street. I don't think that's very nice, but I guess it is what it is. Might take a little while to get on here now. Okay, so that fancy vehicle's going that way. I'm going that way. Uh, the truck coming in, the truck coming in. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Here we go. Sent it. In 500 meters, turn left on Brock Road, RR1. Huh? Brock Road. Sounds familiar. Is there a Brock Road in Winnipeg too? Sounds familiar. So yeah, this is a very common place. Uh, when I come down to the Southern Ontario, I like stopping here, or at least I used to. <laughs> I used to stop at this Petro Pass all the time because I don't think a lot of people knew that it was hidden away back here. But clearly now, more people know it's here. I also realized, I talked to a few guys there this morning and the truck stop is uh, allowing them to pay for permanent spots there, which, oh, I, I really don't like that. It's not fair to those of us who like come from out of province and need a place to park and there's no parking anywhere. So what happens is uh, they 
just take money from whoever wants to park whatever there, right? Yeah, anything. Oh, a trailer, motorhome, utility trailer, truck, car, you know, old broken down piece of junk, whatever. If you want a spot there, you go, you give them your money and you can park, take a parking spot there, right? And fair enough, that's fair business. That's uh, nothing illegal or wrong with that business wise, but I really feel like it's not fair because there's such little parking already and now like if there's even less. But what can you do, right? That is what it is. So just be aware of that when you come, especially in Southern Ontario, a lot of these truck stops, a lot of the parking spots, they uh, they reserve permanently for anybody. It's, I guess it's good for the people who want to reserve a spot. Sure, you got to park, you got you got a spot to park your junk. But like I said, I come from out of province. I'm running out of hours. I'm required by law to stop. That's what the truck stop is for. It's a truck stop. And all the spots are taken up by, you know, like old broken down RVs and stuff. It's... Ah, why do you hate me? Why? You know, you just want me to be first, right? Front of the line, number one. I get it. I get it. I get it. Number one. Look at that. Look at that car right there. That's a nice Mercedes. Look at that purple. Nice truck too. Let's look at that for a second. There you go. Now behind there is that purple car. I actually like that purple. Here, here he comes, here he comes. I like that purple. But not on a car. I wouldn't put it on a car, but it's, it's a nice royal purple, right? Purple is the color of royalty. But whatever, hey, he stands out. You want to get noticed, you paint your car purple. He got noticed. Yeah, now you're on YouTube. There you go. That works. You see, you buy a regular colored car like that, not as many people care. I get it. I get it. There we go. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Always have to have the window cracked. I don't know why. Auto route days, Haros. <laughs> We're in Ontario, Karen. You can speak English. It's okay. <laughs> Auto route days, Haros. That's the French way of saying Highway of Heroes. <laughs> Every province has a highway of heroes. In Manitoba, it's Highway 1. It's the highway that uh, when you have, uh, when we're at war overseas or military conflicts and you have soldiers that die uh, overseas serving the country, their bodies come home uh, and they're brought down the highway of heroes. And here in Ontario, people line the streets and the freeways and the overpasses to uh, honor them as they, as they pass, pass by. So it's called the Highway of Heroes. This is a tight corner. Yikes. Tight. Tight. Why is it going to be so tight? Ontario, you forget the trucks exist. There we go. Oh, there's the 401. Oh, and there's all the people. Oh, man. Oh, well, here we go. If you're interested in seeing it, it's actually quite a moving thing when the soldiers come home and their bodies come down the Highway of Heroes. Once you're done watching my video, go to the search bar and type in Highway of Heroes and watch some of the, the videos that people have made of soldiers returning home and, uh, you know, the hearse and the, the funeral procession. They, they close this entire road. It's a very busy road. Look at it. Not right now, but I mean, what, six lanes across, five lanes across? They closed the whole road for the for the funeral procession, for every soldier that comes home who didn't make it. It's really a really moving thing to see. Go check it out on YouTube after this. Make a little note on the side of your, on the side of your desk there, wherever you are. Once you're done watching this video, type in Highway of Heroes in Canada. It's messy, it's wet, 
We're gonna get a little bit dirty unloading here with these chains, putting them away and everything, but we're gonna have fun. Let's get these reels off my trailer. I'm tired of them. They're heavy. I don't want them anymore. They can have them. Putting on my work shoes, my work boots right now. And uh, these are waterproof, but they're really warm. So I don't wear them all the time uh, because my feet get so hot in them. But in the coldest days of winter, I wear them. And when it's wet outside, I wear them because I can walk through some pretty deep puddles with these things. And uh, my feet don't get wet because nothing's worse than your socks getting soaking wet. And then you got to continue working while your feet are just soaked. I'd rather my feet be a little warm than wet. My other shoes are meant to breathe, right? So uh, my feet don't get too hot, but at the same time, they're not watertight. You walk through water, now your feet are wet. But they're not hot, but they're wet. So you gotta pay. I don't know. It's gonna be kind of squishy out here. Okay, so I've got my waterproof gloves here. Oops, this is a mess, isn't it? I was cleaning my mirrors before. Got a couple of pairs here. My goodness, Josh, Josh, what is going on here? Okay, we got those, we got those. We got a couple of pairs ready to go so that if one gets wet, we can grab the other ones. Set up over here. Okay. Here's the load. I gotta get all these chains off here now and these straps on the first and last one. Then he'll unload me. fun part where you gotta make sure that thing doesn't knock your teeth out when you open them. You gotta take the lock off first and then that one wasn't so bad. Depending on how tight they are sometimes they just fire open. Sometimes you need the bar to get them open. That's why I said when I loaded this, some people like the ratchet binders better. I like these bear traps better. I don't know, I like to live dangerous, I guess. This one's a tight one. onto the bar. Fun, right? I always forget, I need to take these off when it's raining and snowing. They don't do any good. My eyes aren't that bad. Oh, okay. So he's unloading me. All my equipment is put away. All organized, short chains on that side, long chains on this side, all nicely matched up with a binder between each chain. Oh yeah, I'm feeling good. Why is my voice so raspy? <laughs> okay, I think we're good. So I should be unloaded here in the next five minutes. Then he's just gonna help me take all that dunnage. They keep it here. All those like two by fours that were keeping them in place, right? We'll leave them here. My deck will be completely empty. And then we'll start all blue up. <clears throat> come on, come on. Uh... <coughs> Are we good now? Usually I'd cut that all out. I'm just gonna leave it in there, I don't care. I don't care, I'm feeling good. I feel organized, which means I feel good. Uh... Yeah, he's taking off two at a time, like a boss. Nice. Okay, well. I'll talk to you in a bit. It is wet out there. I've gone through two pairs of gloves already. They are waterproof, but <laughs> they keep the water off your hand. My hands are dry, but you know, still gets in there. So that's why I have like 
<laughs> 20 pairs. Here's a dry pair, right on. That's coming down pretty good here. A lot of snow. Look at this. I might even take this winter front off. It's not really cold out. We'll see. There you go. Two at a time. Like a boss. Oh, look at this. Yikes. Yikes. Oh my, look at that. Oh, we need to clean this off. Oh, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess out here. It's a mess. Now we gotta go get onto the highways and drive through Toronto. Hooray! You know what, I wake up every morning and, and tell myself, I wish it was snowing and I was driving through Toronto. Dream come true. All right, oh, we are light now. Wow, old Blue just wants to give her. No messing around. Oh, that guy's coming in here. Okay, okay, I'm going out here. You're coming in here. I'm going out there. You're coming in here. I get it. Which way are you going there, little day cab? All right. Oh, and there's another one coming in here yet? No, you're going the other way. All right. What are you doing? What are, what are you? That was uh. There was easier ways of. Okay, that works. <laughs> that works. Yeah, whatever. We don't all have to do things the same way. I understand. Some people like to do it the hard way. I get it. I get it. Okay, let's get out of here. Man, this snow. I, like, this snow isn't bad. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I can't even imagine what traffic's going to be like in Toronto. Well, this is fun. Big old snowstorm. Believe it or not, we're in uh, Toronto right now, or the greater Toronto area anyway. I think this is Scarborough. I don't know, I'm not from here. I'm trying to get out of here. I need to get to the other side of the city. Look at this guy on the right, he's got his he's got his hazards on. Good thing he's got those on. Good thing he's got those on, you know? People behind him might not realize there's a snowstorm. <laughs> Usually on the highway, you put your hazards on so that people coming up behind you will see you easier, right? If it's snowing a lot. When you're in town like this, uh, we see you, buddy. We see you, but good effort. A plus. Oh, man. And I looked at the weather forecast for London, where I'm going, and it uh, looks like it's going to be snowing there, too. <coughs> I was gonna get the truck washed today, you know, sit down, relax. I'm gonna go find a restaurant somewhere. Now I'll just be happy to get there. It's pretty windy too. By the time I get there, I bet you the place is just gonna be packed full of guys trying to get off the road. So that's something to look forward to. And on top of all this, I gotta go to the bathroom. Uh-huh. And we just entered Toronto. I purposely stopped and went before I got here, but we're moving so slowly, and it's not like you can just pull over and, you know, use a restroom. I'll figure it out.
That was pretty bad. It got better though. It got better. All right, bud, you don't need the whole driveway. How about you just use your side and I'll use my side and then none of us have to hit this guy who's nicely parked off here, off to the side here. I want some juice. I want some go-go juice. All the good stuff. pump at the end here? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Just for us. Two of them. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be right on the end. I like to be alone. A loner. Right here. Yeah, let's quickly throw some juice in and go find a parking spot. We'll shut her down for a couple of days. Well, for tomorrow. And that's it. What a day. It was a short distance that we traveled, but it was a long day. <laughs> a very long, very, very, did I say very? Very long day. Toronto traffic is bad on its own without any other uh, things happening. But with a snowstorm, 20 kilometers an hour. All the way from like Scarborough all the way to Milton. Just, and then from Milton to London was practically, oh, 60 kilometers an hour. Whew, we were really trucking then. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the, uh, <clears throat> with the area, that's, uh, that's the whole way. The whole way. But the roads were bad, so it's better we go too slow than too fast, right? filled up my tanks here and now we're here until the day after tomorrow uh, I'm not gonna be driving at all tomorrow but I'll do like a one take vlog just to fill you guys in and what I'm doing and just to keep the daily vlogs going so tomorrow we'll just be sitting right here a one taker a little short little update vlog and then after that we're gonna be going to pick up a uh, an oversize which is gonna take us back home Thanks for watching today, everybody. Please don't forget to subscribe. Helps me out a lot. Still about 40% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. Uh, if you want to give me the bestest, best early birthday present or late Christmas present that you could think of, it would be to go down below my video on YouTube there and hit that subscribe button and then share the video to your friends. That would be fantastic. I'll see everybody tomorrow.